Hello again, everyone. I'm Ken Whiting, and this is another episode of Paddle Tales, a series that goes to some of the most amazing destinations in the world and shares cool paddling adventures along the way. Now, in this episode, we're going to a river that I really should know because it's right where I grew up. It runs through Canada's capital city of Ottawa. It's the Rideau River. Now, before we get into it though, please, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and make sure the notifications are on so you get informed when new videos go up. I also want to send a big shout out to Le Boat for hosting us, as well as to our project partners, Bell Fund, Ontario Creates, NRS, Aquabound, and Track Kayaks. And so, without further ado, please enjoy Paddle Tales on the Rideau River. in eastern Ontario. We're on our way to a small and beautiful town called Smith Falls, which is on the Rideau River. And it's also home to Le Boat, which is a company that offers boating holidays. They've been doing it for something like 50 years in Europe. They just set up an operation in Canada and it lets us explore parts of the Rideau River that were otherwise more difficult to access. Smith Falls is a really good example of a classic small town in Eastern Ontario. It's also about halfway through the Rideau Canal system, which makes it a great spot for Le Boat to have their main base. The Rideau Canal goes from the city of Kingston to the city of Ottawa, the capital of Canada. It's amazing. I've lived here my whole life, never explored it. I'm looking forward to seeing more of this. This is a double boat. I get to put a boat on a boat and go boating from a boat. It's kind of like the dream boating scenario. I've never been on a houseboat or a yacht, so I didn't know exactly what to expect when I hopped on to the Le Boat Horizon 4, which is a four bedroom boat. Oh, the bedroom for the next week my own bathroom and shower. It basically is like taking a cottage, packing it down, putting it on this cool, boatable, cruisable platform, and then you can just go on tour with your cottage. Now the boats run pretty good. Now when you first get on the boat, they give you a run through of all the ins and outs and how the boat operates, as well as a driving lesson. All you really need to know up here is your speed, your engine RPM, and your big rudder angle indicator. Your horn. Oh! <laughs> How did that horn work? <laughs> They'll work with you as long as you need to be comfortable driving a 45 foot boat. And you learn in the small canal section in Smith Falls. There's not a lot of room there, and at first it's a little intimidating, but then you learn about how the thrusters work on this thing. It's such an easy boat to drive that it felt like no time at all. And there I was doing donuts in the canal and feeling really, really comfortable. You've done this before. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> so right off the bat, I was blown away by how much fun it was just to drive these boats. But then you have to pass through some locks to continue moving upstream. And that was such a cool experience. Being my first time cruising down the Rideau Canal, the first thing that I noticed, which was really comforting, was that the channel is so well marked by the buoys. For a boat that only goes six or seven knots top speed, you'd think, ah, that's not the enjoyable part of the trip. It really is. Driving this boat is awesome. And the fact that it offers such a great platform we just see the landscape. I can't wait to get further down this river. It's late September and it's my absolute favorite time of year. The fall colors are starting to really pop. The other great thing is that there's very little other boat traffic out here. So you see a lot more wildlife. It's just a gorgeous waterway that really showcases what Eastern Ontario has.
Well, it has been a spectacular morning, but the adventure is just beginning because I'm about to head up the Tay Canal. First though, I need to go through Beverage's locks. Although I could just put the boat on my shoulder and quickly get around the locks, why wouldn't I take advantage of this opportunity? So these lock systems are really an engineering marvel. They were built in early 1800s. And so when you pull up to them, it really takes you back in time. There really isn't too much in Canada that feels old, like a deep history. In fact, these locks were created before Canada was even Canada. <laughs> I won't lie, this is a little daunting. I feel like I'm pulling into a prison cell or what the? I'm being sealed in. There's a small part of me that's saying, don't let them close the door behind you. I'm locked in. Now what are they doing? There's a lot of water coming in here. It's a pretty strong current. So if you're not familiar with what locks do, this river, the Tay River, actually has like a rapid or a waterfall and this lock is designed to bypass that waterfall so that boats can get through it. So what you do is you paddle or cruise into this room and then they let the water from above in to meet the water level up above and then they open the doors and you paddle out. Feels a whole lot different when you're not at the bottom of the Room of Doom when you're up at the top. Hello, Ken. Well, hello. You must be Valerie. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to the Tay Canal. How was your lockage? It was good. That was an experience. I hear you are the person to show me the Tay Canal. Canal. Well, I've, I've paddled it a couple of times. It's a beautiful part of the Rideau system, and I'd love to show it to you today. Perfect. Well, shall we? Absolutely. After you, sir. <laughs> Valerie! From that snazzy green shirt, you clearly work for Parks Canada, but what specifically do you do with Parks Canada? And I work in communication at the Rideau Canal Field Unit. And the Rideau Canal is a 202 kilometer National Historic Site. We are a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and we are a designated historic river as well. But we're not on the Rideau Canal we at the moment. We are not, <laughs> we are not. So we are on the beautiful Tay, and the Tay is something that was added to the Rideau Canal proper in the 1890s. Added for commercial purposes, but hardly used for that reason. It's used primarily right now for leisure. And look, we have another paddler coming our way. Hello. Hi. <laughs> A good day for it. <laughs> so I just came through Beverages Locks, and I got to say that is one of the coolest experiences I've had in a kayak in a long time. Such a neat feeling paddling into that lock and then having the door close behind you, the gates of Mordor almost. The mighty gates, yes. But a lot of people don't know that kayakers and canoers are very welcome to lock through. You can in fact get a paddle pass. And it's only stand-up paddle boards that we ask to portage around. But it's a great experience. I've come through in my canoe and I think it's a really great way to explore a different part of the system. 30 years of kayaking, and it's one of the most memorable experiences that uh, I've ever had. Oh, fantastic. Well, you encourage your paddling friends and community to come out and see us. We're very happy to have them. Oh, I don't want a crowd out here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping this to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love paddling through wetlands, marshlands, anything like that. It's always teeming with life. It's always a bit of a maze. In this case, the Tay River, it's easy paddling, it's protected from wind and waves, and it's worth doing. It's really worth checking out. Well, we've made it to Perth, and we're at Perth Outfitters, the first stop when you come up the Tay River, and it's also the kayak and canoe outfitter for the river. They also have mini putt here, they got carts here, They've got five acres right in Perth itself. Outdoor play, that's what it's about. Perth is pretty much the classic Eastern Ontario small town. Lots of boutique shops, restaurants, they've got a distillery. There's a lot of cool places to visit along the Rideau Canal system, but I think it would be a big mistake not to visit Perth if you came here. 
wow paddling through town is not only cool but it smells awesome you can smell the restaurants the barbecues my stomach is growling so i think we're going to make our way to the first restaurant that we can paddle up to echo hunger <laughs> bake shop of course my mouth is watering we're changing things up today the rain has come in at least for this morning perfect time to go fishing and so i've hooked up with rj of rj and birdies outdoor adventures and so what are we doing today we're going to be throwing moving baits for largemouth and smallmouth that kind of patrol on a flat here just out front of Westport. Here. Hope for a few bites. And if not, well, there's always an excuse for not catching fish. <laughs> oh, I got them all. <laughs> we should have some type of wager here. Uh, whatever you want. The beer is always the best thing to, to bet on. Sure. Let's hit the water. Beauty, let's go. So this is the upper Rideau, but the Rideau Canal system has just a ton of fishing and different types of fishing too. All the way from Ottawa right to Kingston, there's great fishing in every lake as you go along, bar none. Speaking of which, we do need a bet. I'm still thinking about what the bet's gonna be for. Is it biggest largemouth, biggest smallmouth? I would say biggest fish overall. Okay. Or most, up to you. You know what, I feel like I have a better chance of stumbling upon success by one? with one good one than trying to beat you with, with quantity. <laughs> It's always nice to spice things up a little with a bet. And I'm a sucker for competition, so I have trouble not fishing with some type of bet on the table. There's one. One nothing. Remember, it's not quantity. It's quality. Oh, okay. Well, that's a quality fish. <laughs> so that's the way you're playing. That's the way I'm playing. <laughs> Early and often, hopefully. Just so you know, poaching a spot is so not beneath me. <laughs> Just because I like to make small wagers when I'm fishing, it doesn't mean it's the smart thing to do. And in this case, fishing with a guy who knows these waters, but more importantly, is about 10 times the angler that I'll ever be, that's a bad bet. Um, Ken, uh, this is what they look like, man. Uh, Same bait. <laughs> So I'm feeling pretty proud of myself right now. I think I'm up on four or nothing, but maybe we should have bet most fish. Any cast on this lake, he could trump everything that I've done so far. I don't feel like I'm out of the woods yet. He's lost a couple of fish and he's not giving up. So what you got there? I think this is called a fish. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> I'm definitely prone to making bad bets, but I'm not a complete idiot. I don't bet too much. I can handle losing a beer, even though a beer is quite valuable to me. I'm a man of my word. And so even though I didn't want to give up that beer, he won it fair and square. Our exploration of Westport continued after fishing as the blue skies arrived. What better thing to do on a gorgeous bluebird day than to go to a winery. So we grow three grapes. We grow Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Vidal. The Vidal does make our forced carbonated uh, bubbly. We call it Les Boules. You'll try that first. It's really nice, it's dry, it's effervescent. Now I'm no wine connoisseur, but it really is neat to try different types of wines back to back to back to back like that and really actually dissect what I enjoy. Okay, I have a new favorite. Right? <laughs> yeah, that was good. You don't have to drive anywhere. No. Benefits. <laughs> That's nice. They also have this really cool little pizza restaurant. I love pizza, and they were good pizzas. Even though I'd had a full day by that point, so I couldn't resist, I had to head back out, use what I learned from RJ in the morning, and try to get on a few more bass. Like, uh... RJ was saying they're a little confused right now whether to come off the, the shallows, the flats, or to head to deeper water. The transition time. 
There we go. Sweet. <laughs> That's a nice fish. I don't know, RJ. I think that might win the beer back. <laughs>